The Prophet referred to the most in the Quran, both personally and in terms of his people, is Prophet Moses. Verses provide very detailed information concerning Prophet Moses, his struggle alongside his brother Aaron against Pharaoh, the wicked behavior of his people, and his message to them. And there is a miracle that has come down from the time of this blessed prophet to the present day, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is a valuable chest revealed by our Almighty Lord in the Quran and containing articles belonging to prophets Moses and Aaron. It is revealed in verses that this chest is a sign from God, endowing believers with peace and a sense of security. For these reasons, Christians, Jews and Muslims have all made great efforts to locate it. Yet it has been lost since 587 BC. As can be seen from the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad, may God bless him and grant him peace, the Ark will be rediscovered in the end times. There is something else very special about the Ark. The honor of finding the sacred Ark will belong to the leader who will bring the moral values of the Quran to prevail on earth during the end times. In other words, to the Mahdi. The discovery of the Ark will be one of the major signs of the coming of the Mahdi. At the same time, the sign will also be regarded as a symbol of his dominion. The Ark found in the time of the Mahdi will be removed from Lake Tiberias and brought before him in Bait el Maqdis. When the Jews see him, all but a few will become Muslims. Only God knows for certain. Let us now go back in time a few thousand years and have a brief look at the period when the Ark of the Covenant first appeared. One of the oldest civilizations in history. Ancient Egypt. One religion dominated Egypt in the time of Prophet Moses. It was a pagan religious creed inherited from previous Egyptians' ancestors. There were numerous false deities in that religion. At the head of the state was a cruel ruler who, according to the precepts of his ancestral religion, declared himself to be the greatest deity of all, Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, I am your Lord Most High. Pharaoh and his inner circle had literally enslaved the children of Israel. They used the Israelites for their own purposes. People were enslaved and tortured, and male children killed for no reason, simply on grounds of racial difference. Pharaoh ensured that people were subject to him through cruelty and oppression. 
This sense of atmosphere is described in the Quran. Pharaoh exalted himself arrogantly in the land and divided its people into camps, oppressing one group of them by slaughtering their sons and letting their women live. He was one of the corruptors. It was in such a climate as this that God sent a messenger to do away with this cruelty and oppression, to remind people to serve only our Lord, the sole ruler of the universe, and to free the Israelites. Prophet Moses The life of Prophet Moses, who waged a divine struggle from the moment of his birth to his very last breath, is full of a great deal of good counsel. Immediately after his birth, he was placed into a chest by his mother and abandoned to the waters in order to save him from the cruelty of Pharaoh. But a miracle took place. Prophet Moses was found and adopted by Pharaoh's wife and taken to the palace to be raised. After reaching adulthood in the palace, he left Egypt going to Midian, where he remained for eight to ten years. When he subsequently returned to Egypt, God revealed unto him that he was honored with the rank of prophet. This signaled the beginning of his struggle against the cruelest and most arrogant man on earth. A struggle in opposition to Ramses II, known as the cruelest of the pharaohs of Egypt. Accepting the prayer of Prophet Moses, God sent him his brother, Prophet Aaron, as an aid in his struggle. The struggle waged by these two prophets went down in history as one of the most important events of all time. He and his brother led the captive Israelites out of Egypt and rescued them from the cruelty of Pharaoh. On a day when the people had gathered together, Prophet Moses conveyed the true religion to Pharaoh and those around him. He called on Pharaoh to believe in the Lord of the worlds. The sorcerers among Pharaoh's elite believed in Prophet Moses. But Pharaoh grew proud and persisted in his denial. After many exploits, Prophet Moses and Aaron gathered up the Israelites and left Egypt. Pharaoh and his army soon followed on their heels. Pharaoh and his troops were close behind and it seemed that there could be no escape. But God performed a tremendous miracle. He commanded Prophet Moses to strike the sea with his staff. And the waters divided in two. God made a dry path between them. And Prophet Moses and the Israelites crossed to the other side. Once they had crossed, the sea closed over the Pharaoh and his men who were following him, perished. Following these events, Prophet Moses and his people set out for the place where they were to live in peace, heading directly from Mount Sinai. Because, according to the Quran, that was what God set aside for Prophet Moses. 
This appointment time of the Lord was made for a 40-day period. Prophet Moses would remain on the mountain for 40 days. We set aside 30 nights for Moses and then completed them with 10. So the appointed time of his Lord was 40 nights in all. Moses said to his brother Aaron, Be my successor among my people. Keep order and do not follow the way of the corruptors. Prophet Moses left his people and reached Mount Sinai within the time specified. During that time, Prophet Moses came into the presence of our Lord and received from him the tablets containing counsel and sufficient explanation of all things. He said, Moses, I have chosen you over all humanity for my message and my word. Take what I have given you and be among the thankful. We wrote about everything for him on the tablets as an admonition and making all things clear. And we said, Seize hold of it vigorously and command your people to adopt the best in it. I will show you the home of the deviators. After the deaths of the prophet Moses and Aaron, the blessed Ark of the Covenant, containing various items belonging to them and, according to accounts, the original text of the Pentateuch, changed hands many times. After the death of Prophet Moses, the Israelites again turned to denial and began following wicked paths. In their excess, they abandoned the religion taught them by Prophet Moses. But a period full of suffering then began for them. They suffered many difficulties, and cruel tyrants ruled over them. They suffered terrible oppression. They were exiled from their homes and lands. They realized from this that neither the deities they took for themselves, nor their goods, nor their ancestors had the power to save them. As a result, they asked God for a ruler who would save them from this cruel regime. God describes their plight in the Quran. What do you think about the council of the tribe of Israel after Moses' time when they said to one of their prophets, Give us a king and we will fight in the way of God. He said, Is it not possible that if fighting were prescribed for you, you would not fight? They said, How could we not fight in the way of God when we have been driven from our homes and children? But then when fighting was prescribed for them, they turned their backs, except for a few of them. God knows the wrongdoers. God selected Saul as king of the Israelites. But they grew arrogant and rebelled against him. They put forward many pretexts and were ungrateful in the face of God's command. Their prophet said to them, God has appointed Saul to be your king. They said, 
How can he have kingship over us when we have much more right to kingship than he does? He has not even got much wealth. He said, God has chosen him over you and favored him greatly in knowledge and physical strength. God gives kingship to anyone he wills. God is all-encompassing, all-knowing. In the face of these objections, God sent them clear evidence that Saul was the king. By means of the presence of the Ark of the Covenant that was with him, Their prophet said to them, The sign of his kingship is that the ark will come to you, containing serenity from your Lord, and certain relics left by the families of Moses and Aaron. It will be borne by angels. There is a sign for you in that if you believe. This ark, or chest, was the Ark of the Covenant with its sacred contents. And its being in the possession of Saul was a sign of his kingship. According to one generally agreed account, the chest contained such sacred objects as the staff of Prophet Moses, and the Pentateuch tablets, and the staff and the turban of Prophet Aaron. In the same way that the Ark is a symbol of the kingship of Saul in the Quran, so in Hadith it is described as a symbol of the dominion that the Mahdi will establish on earth. Saul, whose kingship was made clear by the presence of the Ark, waged war against the army of Goliath. According to historical sources, the cruel ruler Goliath captured the Ark during this conflict. However, Despite being few in numbers, the Israelites emerged victorious from the war. Prophet David killed Goliath during the fighting, and the ark was passed into his possession. And with God's permission, they routed them. David killed Goliath, and God gave him kingship and wisdom, and taught him whatever he willed. If it were not for God's driving some people back by means of others, the earth would have been corrupted. But God shows favor to all the worlds. Prophet David was both a king and a prophet endowed with knowledge by God. During the reign of Prophet David, Jerusalem was declared capital of the United Kingdom of Israel, and the Ark of the Covenant was thus conveyed to it. Prophet David entrusted the Ark to his successor, Prophet Solomon. a city sacred to the three revealed religions, Jerusalem. This city possesses the temple built by Prophet Solomon and a history linked to the Ark of the Covenant. Prophet Solomon had a special site constructed for the Ark inside the temple. He had the Ark, containing the tablets of the law, placed in a windowless chamber in the temple. After remaining here for a long time, the Ark passed into the hands of different people at various times. Roman Emperor Pompeius captured Jerusalem in 63 BC, and King Herod, who was declared as the King of Judea in 40 BC, set about expanding and beautifying the temple. The temple was sacked and burned in 70 AD.
The seven-branched candelabrum and a few other sacred objects rescued were carried to Rome. Ever since then, the Jews have wept nearby the temple and later at the Wailing Wall, the remains of Herod's ramparts. In 587 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar II, builder of the famous Hanging Gardens of Babylon, captured Jerusalem in a fierce onslaught. He pillaged it and exiled the Jews living there to Babylon and other cities. After that time, the ark was lost, and no trace of it was ever found. Forty years later, however, the Jews' exile came to an end, and they returned to Jerusalem. They then rebuilt the temple, but were forced to leave the chamber of the ark empty. The belief that the ark was not actually lost at all soon began to spread. The rumor began to spread that the Ark had been concealed in a secret compartment prepared beneath the temple by the Levites, who were responsible for its protection. Yet these rumors were insufficient to locate the Ark. Finally, historical sources agree that in 70 AD, the Roman general Titus reached this underground chamber after sacking Jerusalem and sent the Ark with its sacred contents to Rome. The Ark, believed to be kept in Jerusalem between 587 BC and 70 AD, was never seen again. Furthermore, the Jews, who believe that the Ark will reappear after the coming of the Messiah, have been seeking it for hundreds of years. Christians are searching for it because they regard the Ark as one of the signs of the return of Prophet Jesus to earth before the Day of Judgment. the time of the First Crusade. The Christians who participated in the Crusade captured Jerusalem with terrible slaughter. Most of the soldiers who took part in the war returned home, with the exception of one group. One group of crusaders, mainly consisting of Frenchmen, remained in the region. Jerusalem was of the greatest importance to these people, who called themselves the Knight Templars. The true aim of the nine knights who founded the Templars' cult was very different to that of the other troops. They said that they wished to find remains and writings containing the essence of Judaism and the secret traditions of ancient Egypt. It is a known fact that their aim was to find the Ark. Their presence in Jerusalem after so many years was therefore an opportunity not to be missed. 
This was because they could now search the region as they wished and had the means to look for the Ark. The Knight Templars carried out the first recorded excavations at the Temple Mount at the time of the Crusades. The importance to the Templars of the Ark of the Covenant could clearly be seen in the historical works they left behind them. A relief drawn by them on the northern door of Chartres Cathedral, built by them in the 12th century, depicts the Ark of the Covenant being taken to an unknown destination in a carriage. And underneath, this is written, here is hidden the Ark of the Covenant. Although the Templars obtained some information in the inquiries they conducted until the 19th century, they never found the Ark. The long years of endeavors to find the Ark of the Covenant were also reflected in films. Harrison Ford and the Adventures of Indiana Jones, for example, and one particular film in this series, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was directed by Steven Spielberg. The film's subject matter deals with the famous archaeologist Indiana Jones being charged by his country with locating the lost Ark of the Covenant. Jones embarks on an adventure filled with traps and dangers in order to locate the Ark. The films in this series evoked considerable interest in the years they went on release. They not only appealed to adventure lovers, but also attracted considerable interest from religious circles. Although the subject matter and locations do not fit the historical facts, the film was visually sufficient to awaken great interest. In this way, the search for the Ark of the Covenant again became a current issue. According to Hadith reported by our Prophet, the Ark is somewhere near Antioch in Turkey. In the end times, it will be found by the Mahdi and will be a symbol of his dominion, as it was of the kingship of Saul. The Hadith on this subject state, The reason for him being called the Mahdi is his showing the way to a hidden thing. He will unearth the Ark from a place known as Antioch. The Mahdi will send an army to wage war against the Romans. His knowledge of the law is as great as that of ten scholars. He will unearth the Ark of the Covenant from the Antioch cave. Some members of the Jewish Essen cult who fled Roman persecution sought shelter in Qumran on the shores of Lake Lut, or the Dead Sea, and near Jordan. Others settled around Antioch. The Essenes who settled around Antioch might have taken the Ark of the Covenant with them. They probably sought a safe place to keep the Ark, which they had protected from pillage and theft for hundreds of years and decided to settle in Antioch. The Essens were different to other communities in various ways. Those who settled in Qumran set about copying and protecting the Pentateuch. Those who settled in Antioch, on the other hand, 
dedicated their entire lives to the protection and preservation of the Ark to such an extent that they would even sacrifice their lives for it. They cut themselves off totally from society and had no dealings with anybody. They had their own farms and land in which they grew their food. The protection of the Ark was their main duty. Thanks to this scrupulous care of theirs, the Ark may be completely preserved and in a place of safekeeping. It is God who knows for certain, of course. Prophet emphasizes in the Hadith that Antioch, in connection with the location of the Ark, is of the greatest significance. There are many natural caves in this province of Turkey, and the region is entirely suitable for the concealment of the Ark down the years. Among these caves is that of the Seven Sleepers, where the companions of the cave are believed to have dwelled. The fact that the Ark of the Covenant has remained undiscovered down to the present day may be due to the difficulties and technical impracticalities of the region. However, it is possible that the Ark, lost for hundreds of years, may be located by means of the technological advances made in recent decades. Moreover, the fact that the Ark will be discovered in our time is supported by the other signs of the end times that are taking place one by one. Furthermore, it is particularly significant that such a historical treasure should be found in our time and, what is more, in Turkey. The investigations directed towards the finding of this Ark with its enormous spiritual importance must be accelerated at once and the whole region must be combed. The symbolic significance of the discovery of this sacred legacy will increase the joy and enthusiasm of Muslims since it is a sign of the Mahdi. The fact that the Ark will be brought to light in Turkey may indicate that this is the country from which the Mahdi will emerge and this attaches a whole new importance to the subject. Only God knows for certain. As stated in the Quran, the Ark of the Covenant, because it represents a proof for believers, has been sought by members of all three divine religions for many years. The fact that it has remained undiscovered, despite such detailed investigation, may be a sign that it will be found in our time, when so many of the signs of the end times are taking place. The Hadith also referred to another comparison between Saul, to whom the Ark was given as a sign of his kingship, and the Mahdi, who will bring the Ark forth during the end times. One of these Hadith says, The Mahdi will have as many helpers as the number of those who crossed the river with Saul. In this Hadith, which refers to the Mahdi and the number of his helpers, the name of Saul is repeated and a comparison made with his army. This shows that there may be similarities between the struggles of the Mahdi and Saul. Only God knows for certain. The end times are a period close to the day of judgment when Quranic moral values will prevail over the whole world and people will live widely by them. The immorality, oppression, cruelty, injustices and degeneration of previous ages will come to an end in this blessed time. And all troubles will be replaced by plenty, abundance, wealth, peace and beauty. There will be major technological advances and all these will be used for people's ease and comfort. By the will of God, the Ark too will be a sign of this age and a harbinger of good times for all humanity. Our Prophet has provided information about the Ark and its discoverer, the Mahdi.
and has imparted the glad tidings of this sacred event. Join the most auspicious of the community of Muhammad, your guardian who will free you from all woes. He is the Mahdi. According to the Hadith revealed by our Prophet, the Ark will be found in the end times by the Mahdi and will be a symbol of his dominion. There can be no doubt but that this is a great miracle of our Prophet. Centuries before, he imparted tidings that the end times will take place in this Hadith. By the will of God, the Hadith concerning the Mahdi will come true in the end times, and these miracles will be a means whereby Muslims render thanks. And peace be upon the messengers, and praise be to God, the Lord of all the worlds.